Today we are covering a deck screener tutorial. We are going to go through each component of the app to ensure that you know what everything means, how to use each feature most effectively, and most importantly, to try and avoid being rug pulled. Now, most people watching this video are probably looking at Deck Screener to trade meme coins, but at its simplest level, Deck Screener allows anybody to find the information, metrics, details on any on chain coin. So, the first thing that we have to do is access Deck Screener. So, if you haven't already, mobile users will be looking to download the app. It is available on the Apple App Store or on the Google Play Store. And for PC users, it's just simply heading over to their website and I will leave a link in the description. However, for the purpose of today's video, we are going to use the mobile version as I do think that most people will be using that. When we enter the app, the first thing that we're going to do is go to the menu and we're going to select dark mode if it isn't already selected because anybody using light mode is a crazy person. Jokes aside, the first thing that we're going to look at is the home page, which is labeled screener in the bottom left corner. Now, this can be quite overwhelming, especially for beginners. So we're going to break down each component. So at the top of the homepage, we have a few different tabs. We have trending, moonshot, new, and top. The trending tab is pretty much what you would expect. These are the coins that are currently attracting the most attention based on transactions, based on the amount of volume, and so on. Now, the good thing with the trending tab is you can change the time frame that is relevant to. So you can select five minutes, one hour, six hours, or 24 hours. And based on your trading style, this will be down to your preference. For example, somebody selecting five minutes may be looking to jump in and out of trades as quickly as possible when a certain coin is picking up momentum. The next tab is Moonshot, and this is essentially Deck Screener's competitor of Pump Fun. Now, many of you may be aware of the platform itself, but it is essentially where coins wait to hit their bonding curve. They hit a certain market cap and then they go public for everybody to trade. Now, we're not going to cover this in too much detail in today's video. I do think it is a little bit too degenerate for today for beginners. So we will move on to that at a later stage. Next, the new tab is pretty much what you would expect. These are coins that have recently been created and launched. And again, we have a similar amount of filters where you can change the time that it has been around, the volume, the transactions, and stuff like that. Now, this is again, something that people may use if they are looking to jump into coins as early as possible, really high risk plays, because they will know exactly what has been created in the last five minutes. And the last tab is top, and we have two different filters for this. We have the top volume, which is mostly just covered in high market cap coins that generally get good volume like Ethereum, USDC, and so on. And then you'll get the odd one, which is, you know, a meme coin but that, you know, if the market cap doesn't line up too well, it probably is fake volume or botted. And then it is the same with the transactions. Now, again, with this tab, you're going to see a lot of projects, a lot of meme coins that have a crazy amount of transactions on launch. Now, a lot of the time, these are not legit. A lot of projects do bot the amount of transactions and volumes so that they get recognized. So it's definitely worth keeping this in mind and maybe not using the top tab as much as other people. And then at the bottom of the page, you will see some filters that are just above the navigation bar. Now this again is good to do some custom searches. So you can search by market cap size, you can search by boosted coins, you can search by different chains. So whether this coin is on Solana, Base, Sui, and so on. And of course, the main part of the homepage is the actual list of coins. Now you will see key information surrounding these coins, such as the name, the ticker, the price, the volume, and a couple of other bits. But when you click into the coin, this is where you will see further details. And just for the record, I have selected the first coin in the list. I'm not telling you to go and buy this coin. It is just what is there right now. It probably will rug in the next two hours. Who knows? So let's break down the profile of FCP, first crypto president. Again, do not just go and ape this coin. So right at the top of the profile, you'll see FCP, Sol, and you'll see this little symbol here with 14H. That just means it is 14 hours old at this point. The next symbol shows that it is trending number one on deck screener. 
and it has had 2,500 boosts, which are basically just paid for by the team or the community. It's also paid for ads, and that is basically just breaking down that exactly. If we continue to go down the page, we will see the banner, which is just a custom image that people can add to their profile. And then you'll see any kind of social links. So here you've got Twitter and Telegram, and for other coins, you may see website and other bits and bobs like that. Next up on the list, you have the price, which of course is pretty self-explanatory. And then you have liquidity. Now, generally speaking, liquidity is very subjective, but if it is around 10% of the market cap, that's pretty average, I would say. And the key thing here is that you see the little lock symbol next to liquidity. This means that liquidity is locked and the developers or team cannot pull it and take the funds out of this liquidity pool. It is completely safe and confirmed by deck screen. Next to liquidity, we have the FDV, fully diluted value and the market cap. And typically speaking, meme coins do launch with all tokens in circulating supply which basically means all tokens are available and the fully diluted value should be exactly the same as the market cap. Scrolling down further, you'll see the performance of the coin over the last five minutes, one hour and so on, which is just there for reference. And then you've got some more key stats that may be interesting to a lot of people. You've got the amount of transactions, you've got the amount of volume and makers, which is the unique wallets that have done transactions for this coin. You have the amount of buyers, sells, the buy volume, the sell volume, and the amount of buyers and sellers again, with unique wallets. Now, a lot of this is probably self-explanatory to many people, but one tip that I would have for beginners is if you see the recent performance, maybe 24 hour, say minus 99%, this is not a good discount. You are not getting a good price. It means that the project has probably rugged and is going to stay at zero forever. And then the remaining items left on this info page, we have the watch list and the alerts. Now this is something that we'll get into later, so we'll leave that for now. The trade button, which will take you into a browser and allow you to connect your wallet and actually trade the coin. You have then further down, you'll have an ad, which of course you can ignore. And then moving on from that, you've got how long ago the pair was created, the amount of FCP and SOL in the liquidity pool. Now, again, we won't go into detail right now, but it's always a 50-50 split. So people can buy and sell with minimal slippage, depending on how much is in that liquidity pool. Then we have the pair, which is, of course, a contract address for that pair, that specific pair. So if you didn't want to trade directly through Dex Screener, you could copy this go to a different exchange, maybe Jupiter Exchange, for example, copy that into there and it will bring up the exact coin for you and not a copy or a uh, scam version and so on. And it's exactly the same here for the FCP contract address. Further down then, you can search on Twitter. The audit, which of course is a very basic audit done automatically by Deck Screener gives you an idea of if the project has any immediate red flags. Now, this doesn't mean that they won't rug pull, but it gives you a little bit of reassurance that it's just not a flat out scam. And then there is, of course, the community um, voting system, which people can say if it looks like it's going to the moon, fire, poo emoji, and then a big red flag. So of course, if the red flags are way higher than the amount of rocket emojis, that might be something to be concerned about. But again, this can be easily manipulated by the team, the founders, the, the community. So it's definitely not reliable, but it'll at least point you in the right direction if there is a hell of a lot of red flags. Next to the info tab that we've just covered, you will see another tab called charts and transactions. Now, this again is very straightforward. For people who are looking at charts, doing technical analysis, trading from that, the chart is gonna be very helpful for you. We also have the transactions, so looking at exactly which transactions are going through in real time. So you'll see who is buying, who is selling, look at different wallets, be able to track these wallets and so on. You'll be able to also click on some different tabs next to transactions. So you have top traders. You'll be able to see who is buying and selling, if they're making money, if they're losing money. You'll be able to click on snipers. Now snipers are generally bots that jump in on the launch, they are automated to perform transactions and make profit, ideally for the owners of them snipers, but definitely something you want to be aware of. 
You then have holders, which is a very helpful tab. You can see exactly which addresses are holding what percentage of this coin. So of course you usually get the liquidity provider who is the top holder, that is quite normal. But after that, if you see somebody, a, a unique address holding say 20 to 50% of a coin, that to me is a big red flag because you don't want somebody selling that in one clip and absolutely destroying the chart and the project is over. But if you see people like this, a couple with 3%, 1%, it's not too bad, not ideal. You'd like to have as many holders as possible with as small amounts as possible, but you know, you have to be realistic here. These are low cap coins. We also have liquidity providers, so just to reassure you there. And then you have bubble maps, which again is just a good visual of what is going on around this project or token. The amount of holders, if there's any too big, and it's just more in a visual way for people to see. And then the last two tabs there are charts individually and then transactions individually. And that is basically just a breakdown so you can see what we just discussed on their own unique screens. It's bigger, it's clearer and people just prefer that UI. So now we're going to go back to the home page where we started and the next tab next to this in the navigation bar is the search bar. Now again, you probably imagined it is very self-explanatory. This is where you will be able to search for a coin either by name or by contract address with a friend has told you about a coin to go and check out. This is probably the easiest way to find it. If you do want to search by contract address, this is going to ensure that you are definitely looking at the correct one and not a copy version, a scam version, if you just search the name and take a guess because sometimes you will see a lot of search results for one coin. That is just the industry, the scammy in industry that we sometimes have to navigate. Now also on this search page, you will see a list of coins below without even searching. These are usually boosted or advertised coins. So do not assume they are on this page because they are the best coins. Sometimes they are paying to be here and to catch your attention. It is a marketing tool and it doesn't mean that they are the best. Next up on the list, we have the watch list. And this is again, what you would expect. If you want to keep an eye on some specific coins, you will just simply add them to a watch list, favorite them, and then they appear in your custom watch list. So just to show an example here, we go back to the coin we've just been looking at FCP. You scroll down, like I mentioned earlier, you have them two buttons, you have watch list and alerts. You simply click watch list, you add it to the watch list that you uh, selected. So you can have multiple watch lists in this app, which is quite handy if you want to separate, uh, for example, you know, meme coins and then AI coins and so on. So that's pretty helpful. So I've just added that to the watch list here. I click back on watch list refresh the page and then it will appear. It's very, again, very straightforward. And a cool feature they have here is you can actually share this watch list. So if you want your friends to see it, if you want to, them to see exactly what you were looking at or share some ideas, this is a pretty cool feature. Next up on the nav bar, we have alerts. And as we mentioned, this is in the same place on the coin info as the watch list. But one thing you will need to do before this is enable your notifications within the app and within your phone settings as well to ensure that you do get these alerts. And this will be prompted to you the first time that you do it. So once you have done that, again, we're gonna go back to a coin. This time I'm going to click the second coin on the list uh, called Anon, just because the price is $19.45 and it's a bit easier to use as an example. So immediately there, this is a good example. This token is freezable, which deck screener does show up as you know a bit of a red flag, something to be concerned about potentially. However, we're not gonna get into that now. We're going to click on the alerts button and this will give you the option then to set an alert in USD, in the price in Sol, market cap maybe. It's got some pretty good options. So for the example of this, maybe I want to buy the dip. So it's currently at 1945 and I want to buy if it hits 15. So I'll leave the price in USD. If price crosses $15, I want to be alerted. So I'm on my phone and ready to buy the dip at around $15. So that's something that I may want to do. I can, you know, add some notes. So uh, buy here, you know, just some random notes. And again, this isn't a prompt to actually buy. I've done no research on these coins and I'm using them solely as examples. So we click buy here, set alert, and then that is now active. So we can close it, we can go back 
and within the alerts tab we can then see the alert we can edit delete and so on as you would expect and then very quickly we're just going to go through the settings page and a lot of it again very self-explanatory mostly just custom settings to suit what you like to see in your preferences so the screener display the default home screen that's all entirely up to you but the one thing that i do want to say that is quite important is you can sign in on this page you don't have to but it is worthwhile especially if you're going to use deck screen across different devices so if you like to use your pc and your phone for example you may want to create an account and to do this you will either sign in with an email address or just connect a wallet and then you'll be able to see the same watch lists and the same alerts across different devices if you don't create an account then you won't be able to do this but if you are just solely using your phone, then it's not too much of a big deal. Now, a few things to wrap up this video now that are very important. One thing I would say is just to dive into the app and start using it. This is the best way to learn and you can't really make any mistakes, especially if you don't have a wallet connected, you can't accidentally buy something. So just have a play around, get used to it and you'll soon be accustomed to it. The next thing I'll say is that memes are the wild west. So although I give a couple of hints and tips maybe to not get rug pulled and so on, it is just absolutely degenerate out there. So don't bank on it. If you are getting involved in memes, you have to understand the risks in this as well. Also note that there is no right or wrong when using deck screener. We covered a lot of stuff then. There are so many small little features and you know very custom details to this app that you just use it as it suits you. Some person's strategy might be different to the next person's. That is just the way that trading and investing works. And you know you should not feel too overwhelmed that you are not using a certain feature. Like I said, just have a play around, get used to it. You'll soon find out what works for you. And that is the way you should move forward with it. So without doubt, that was probably the longest video on this channel for a while, but it is for good reason because Deck Screener is quite a complex app, especially to those who are new to it. There are so many different features, filters, options that we needed to cover. And hopefully it was useful. If it is, do not forget to please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and also let me know if there's any other tutorials that you would like to see in the future. In the meantime, please do trade safe, invest safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.